as I was preparing for this session, uh, I was just uh, thinking about the simplicity of a life well lived for God. And I want to talk about that today, uh, that the Lord is calling us to a simple lifestyle. He's not calling us to do things that are extravagant or uh, difficult or complicated. And um, the, the Lord, and, and I also, okay, I'll just, let me just stop there for a minute and I want to share a few scriptures based on that comment. Uh, if we go to to Acts, the beginning of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the beginning of the church, we see in Acts chapter 2, verses, verse 42, the simplicity of their lifestyle. Let me read that to us. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers and all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles I want us to see the surrendered lifestyle that they have here it wasn't the awe didn't come upon people because of their activity the awe came because God was with them and it was very evident that God was with them and and all who believed were together and had all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need there was this surrendered lifestyle we can see here and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved we can see the beauty of this simple life that is set apart to devote to the Lord and one of the challenges that we have as Americans is that we have these ideas of of what we have to do of how we have to live of the things we have to have and the Lord has not trained us to think this way the the American uh, culture has trained us to think this way and it's trained us to be anxious for things anxious and and one of the questions that we have well how am I gonna live how am I gonna make it how am I gonna do this how am I gonna do that and I want to answer that with this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 and, and before I read that the reason I want to talk about this is because God has called us to a different lifestyle and that even the things we have been discussing don't work if we don't transition into this new lifestyle a lifestyle of simplicity a lifestyle of intimacy with the Lord a lifestyle of a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit and so in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 it says this therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing now we can add to that don't be anxious about how much money you have in the bank don't be anxious about your home about your livelihood about how you're going to make it about the issues of your life the things that you are struggling with look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not more value more valuable than they he's saying I want I want to give you a contrast like even like the least common denominator little birds our father feeds how much more will he feed us do not be anxious do not worry do not get into the these are traps that the enemy sets for us to get us off course and into a lifestyle that is not his lifestyle 
And so we're not able to be intimate with him if we are anxious and pursuing. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? In, in essence, what, it, what he's saying here as well is that who is in charge of your life? Are you in charge of your life or is God in charge of your life? And why are you anxious about clothing or a job or money or you fill in the blank? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon one of the greatest kings ever in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these simple lilies. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? This is the issue, isn't it? It's our faith. It's our belief in the Lord. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? How will we pay our bills? How will we get by in life? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles, let me add here, the pagan people that don't believe in God seek after all these things. That's their mindset, and this is the problem. We as believers have been caught up in this mindset, and that's why our families have fallen apart. That's why our marriages have fallen apart. That's why so much of what the world is going through, we're going through, because we've been caught into this whirlwind of the world, and the Lord is calling us away into a different lifestyle. And I want to encourage us to embrace that, it's a simple lifestyle that the world, it does not make sense to the natural mind. It does not make sense to the world. But it's a glorious lifestyle. I mean, in the book of Acts that I just read, it doesn't make sense. But God blessed them, multiplied them. It was the start of a worldwide move of God that transformed the world. For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. He knows them. Who's in charge of your life? Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. And then he gives instructions. This is how you're to think. This is how you're to move forward. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek your Father. Seek His direction. Seek His guidance. And His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, whenever the Bible says therefore, it's therefore saying what it was what, what was ahead what was before. Therefore, do not be anxious because you're seeking first the kingdom of God. Your Father knows that you need all these things. You're putting your trust. You have faith in Him. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. And so the Lord is calling us away. He's saying, I want you to live a different lifestyle. This is how we have healthy families. This is how the new creation family lives. He calls us into a simple lifestyle. He calls us into being led moment by moment by the Holy Spirit. And so the most important part of the Christian life is our relationship with the Holy Spirit our yieldedness, our surrender, and our trust. And I want to share some of that today. I have a friend, his name is Chris Vanetti. He and I travel the nations and share a lifestyle that I want to share with you uh, over the next couple of days or the next couple of sessions. And it's called a Spirit-Empowered Lifestyle. And I have a booklet that I want to make available to you uh, I will I will email it 
and uh, make it available to you. It's, uh, it's just a short booklet and it talks about this lifestyle. But I, let, me share, let me share some of it with you today. So what is the spirit empowered lifestyle? Well, it starts with a foundation and the foundation, some of this we've covered and so it'll be a review, but the foundation is out of Galatians 2.20. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. The spirit empowered lifestyle takes this very serious. We take it serious and we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We work it out in our life. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This lifestyle, uh, this is a lifestyle that is fully surrendered to Jesus Christ and lives moment by moment in faith and in step with the Spirit of God to such a degree that it is no longer us living, but God himself living in and through us. And I've shared this, that all God wants to do is be God inside of you. He wants to live his life through you and he wants you to cooperate, surrender, and receive all that he has. Most believers would say, yes, this is good and right, but how do we stay in this place? And we're going to go through some of these keys over the next few days, but I want to just give you an introduction. So if that's the foundation, how do I stay there? Because I'm, I'm, I'm so often like it's a narrow road and I feel like I get, I get pushed off of it and then I, I fall down and I, I have to get back up and get back on that road. But how do I, how do I more consistently grow into staying on this road of this, of being led by the spirit? Well, it's a lifestyle. So being, uh, the foundation is, is Galatians. And how do I stay there? A lifestyle of intimacy with God through reading the word of God, through worship that encounters his presence, not just singing, but encounters his presence and prayer that's de that develops a relationship with God. It's a lifestyle of total dependency on God, living moment by moment, in step, asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to stay? A lifestyle of being a prayer warrior, out of your word and encounters with Him. He births prayer and you intercede, not for yourself, not for selfish desires, but for the purposes of God, which leads into a lifestyle of soul winning, because you're overflowing. It's like these logs that have built this great fire. You're overflowing with love and the fire of the Holy Spirit. And you share your faith with others, not out of duty and obligation, but out of care and love. I want to I want to share a, a testimony about that. So I was traveling to another nation. I don't know where I was going. I can't remember. But I remember being in the airport. And I was just kind of having a, a, a lunch or dinner before for my flight. And I was sitting there and the waitress was serving me. And I was I I, I felt like I, I want to um, bless this waitress. I just felt like the Lord was directing me to bless this waitress. And so what I did is I, I, I sat down and I asked the Lord, what do you as as her father? I don't know if she knows you yet but as her creator and a father who wants to save her what do you want to say to her and i began to write a note and the note started out by saying a note from your heavenly father and i and i began to write how much he loves her what he's done for her how he sacrificed his life for her that he could have a relationship with her and i i don't remember everything i said but I wrote that note and I was I was led by the Holy Spirit to put a hundred dollars in this note and give it to her to bless her now I have never seen her again and I anticipated that I wouldn't but it was it was out of the overflow of my relationship with the Lord and being led by the Holy Spirit that I was able to make that deposit or be a part 
really. I was just doing what God wanted, right? I was being led by Him. It was Him initiating. But I was able to make that deposit in her life and let her know how much her father cares for her. And and sometimes we don't we don't get to hear the reports. There was another, but I, I will share one other that's coming to my mind where I where I am. I ha, I did get to hear the report, which was very it was amazing. So my wife and I were just on a one or two day uh, getaway, and we were walking down the sidewalk uh, next to the ocean, and I saw this homeless man. And I, we walked by him, and then the Lord started turning inside my heart, and I'm like, I, I think I'm supposed to go talk to him. So as we, we, we were returning to the hotel we were staying at, I stopped and I walked over to him, my wife and I did, and and I sat down with him, or I, I, I kneeled down next to him, he was sitting on a bench, and he was kind of coming out of, of being drunk, he was, he was sobering up. Um, and his name was Michael and I and I started to share with him the Lord's love and the Lord gave me a, a, a vision and as I, I was I was sharing the gospel with him and the Lord gave me a vision of him standing before the the Lord by himself being judged and and I saw the Lord saying, I sent Chris to come and share the gospel with you. You have no excuse. You have no excuse. I told you the truth and you, and, and you have no excuse. And as I saw this, I began to share it with him. I said, Michael, it is very important that you come to the Lord because you'll have no excuses. The Lord has sent me here to tell you about His love and His care for you. And and he and, and, and this is what I saw. So I shared that with Him. I prayed for Him. I prayed with Him. I encouraged Him to come to the Lord. But I, I don't know. I didn't know. Uh, he didn't come to the Lord at that point. And I, and I, we walked away with this burden on our heart. Lord, please, please help him please touch him please bring him to, to to salvation and and then we just we went on with our life it was uh years went by and i was i was sharing this same story with someone and and i was telling him about the vision because it was so vivid and she said i was in another church and i know that man and he accepted the Lord. Oh, I remember too, he was not in good health. And, and, and he wasn't going to live long. And she said that he came to our church, he accepted the Lord, and he passed away. And it was such a glorious, uh, 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 beautiful you know, end to that story to know that this homeless man came to Christ. But it was out of this overflow of being led by the Holy Spirit. This lifestyle is about is 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 about a lifestyle of discipleship. But the discipleship comes from modeling, not just teaching and instructing. It comes from living the life of Christ. And and it starts with your family. I have a friend who 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 disciples um, he's a businessman, he disciples others. And 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 one time he was sharing with me how he's you know he spends a year with this person and then a year and he goes through this process and I was like feeling bad like man I don't have somebody right now that I'm discipling and I was I was feeling a little guilty and and the Lord like reminded me of how much I'm pouring into my children and how much I'm pouring in even to my wife and, and, and others around me, but not in a systematic way, not in like, okay, I'm going to meet with you every week and this is what we're going to do. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I believe in that. I think it's a good thing. But, but discipleship is, I mean, biblically, it's more relationally. It, it's not a structure like a curriculum. It's a relationship. 
And so, so uh, this lifestyle is about discipleship, whether it's through curriculum or whether it's through your, your relationship with others. But it has much of a stronger emphasis on relationship. And it's a lifestyle of sending disciples, sending others to go out and establish a lifestyle in their personal lives and in their families and in their spheres of influence. And so, so this is what I want to uh, share with us over the next couple of days. And uh, let's read Romans 8, 28. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. He predestined us to have the lifestyle of his son. He predestined us to have the nature of his son, the character of his son, and to be on the same mission as his son. Jesus said in John 14, 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, the works that I do. Now remember, who was doing the work that Jesus did? It was the Father. It was the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, the works that I do, you're going to do. The Holy Spirit was in Jesus at the time. But then when Jesus ascended to the Father, the Holy Spirit comes upon all of those who believe and the Holy Spirit does the work through us he will do greater works than these because I go to the Father I'm going to the Father and the Holy Spirit's going to re be released on the the church with such solid promises from God himself why is it that so many sincere Christ followers feel confined to a life of spiritual mediocrity. Why? Why do we feel so confined? I believe it's because we do not understand the lifestyle that God has called us to live. So, a couple of diagnostic questions that I want us I want to ask us. Okay? To to kind of stimulate us to think. Okay? Uh, and so uh let me just read this. In order to share what we mean by a spirit-empowered life, lifestyle, there are two simple questions that help to reveal what we're talking about. Okay? So, diagnostic question number one. I want you to ask yourself, what percentage of your typical day is self-led? What percentage of your typical day is self-led? Meaning, how much of your typical day is led by your own mind, will, and emotions? Your plans, your desires, your thoughts, what you think needs to be done. How much of your typical day is led by yourself and that's something I want to encourage you to ask the Lord write it down uh, use this as a uh, uh, something where you can journal and start a discussion with the Lord and think through this the second question is what percentage of your typical day is truly Holy Spirit led so contrast second question is a contrast to the first meaning what percentage of the day is lived in a place of being completely dead to your own thinking will and emotions and instead led solely and only by God's Spirit now we have a few minutes left let me read the heart of the Spirit-empowered life. And some of these verses we've, we've talked about. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Galatians 5, 16, So I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Ephesians 5, 18, do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Romans 8.14 For those who are led 
by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The victorious Christian life is not a matter of trying harder. It's a simple life. Look at, look at Acts 2 again. It's a simple life. They, they, they talked about the apostles' doctrine. The Word of God the Word of God washed them. They fellowshiped. They broke bread together. They, they lived in the generosity of God. They sold what they had as they saw people having needs. They met from house to house. They, they went to the temple daily. This is a simple lifestyle where God gets to possess us. Something will possess you. It just dep depends on who it is. I choose Jesus. I choose the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Something will possess you. And as we live this simple, humble, yielded life where someone else is leading us, where someone else is guiding us, He does the heavy lifting. He does the miracle working power. He's what we want. He's what our heart desires. We don't want our, our effort, or the fruit of our efforts. We want the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We don't want our fruit. And yet we get in these traps in our mind and we've been discipled by the enemy and we fall in these traps. So I just have a couple of minutes left. I want to just introduce this and we'll talk about it tomorrow. There are two sides to abiding in God's Spirit. Two sides. The first is a heart of full surrender. A heart of full surrender. And a prayer, a helpful prayer is this, Father, all that I am and all that I have is yours. All that I am and all that I have is yours. And the other side, the other um, uh, uh, side of an abiding life is a heart of of complete trust and these go together they they flip-flop a heart of full surrender and a heart of complete trust you know if you don't if we don't trust we won't surrender and here's another helpful prayer father I will trust you with everything I surrender everything I will trust you with everything and we're gonna pick up that's the foundation of the spirit empowered life that's the foundation of this simplicity of living a life that is well lived for God a heart of complete surrender a heart of complete trust and and we'll pick this up tomorrow how do I stay there how do I live in this lifestyle so father I pray that you bless us to ponder the questions that have been asked the questions of how how much of our life has been led by you and how much is being led by the Holy Spirit and how much do we how much have we truly surrendered to you how much are we willing to live the simple lifestyle so father I pray that you build us up today strengthen us convict us Lord in your love convict us help us to let go of that which we need to let go of fill us with your presence guide and direct us and help us come into this place of surrendering all, trusting you, and being led by you moment by moment, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.